Hi, today I will interview Pat Patrick Hartono from Indonesia. He is a young composer. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Sandris. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Great. Can you just give us a um, short, short introduction of yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Hartono. I uh, more comfortably call myself, I, think, uh, I will more comfortably call myself as an electroacoustic composer and audiovisual artist. And I think uh, now at the moment, I am a PhD candidate at the University of Melbourne for interactive composition. And I got really uh, interest actually working with uh, computer uh, game technology, particularly virtual reality. Um, Patrick, what is um, good musical composition for you? How you would define? What is good musical composition actually? Well, this is actually a very complex and deep question. For me, for me, let's 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 talk a bit narrow, okay, about uh, composition in my field, because I'm involved a lot of technology. Yes. For me, let's say not good, let's say proper one. It's when everything is in balance. The concept is fifty, and then technology and the technical execution is also fifty, and then together they actually become. Uh, proper uh, artwork for me. Because if you only emphasize the technology, basically you're just uh, exhibiting the technology. If you only uh, emphasize the concept, then for me, it's just become conceptual piece, which is also no problem, but it's just my preference. Yes, got it. And uh, what is uh, your uh, musical signature or musical ideas which you usually I know, came back when you compose? If you listen to my music, I I got really a lot of influence from, uh, let's say, I mean, I compose electroacoustic music in a way, but I got a lot of influence from noise aesthetic, chaos. I just don't know why. Perhaps it's actually really uh, depict myself in a way because I'm really impatient person. I always try to, you know, make everything fast, changes mind all the time. So I think it's actually my approach at the moment. And, you know, all the chaos, all the noises. I got a lot of uh, question about this. Uh, I think even lately, even lately, I, I, I've shown you my uh, uh, last piece for the installation, you know, the, the parallax one. And then people ask me like, oh man, your, your music is always very intense. Like there is, there is always like very intense, there's always like very particular intensity there. And yes, I think it's really depict myself. Like, honestly, it's really like reflection of my personal. And therefore also, I never really compose piece more than 30 minutes. Because if I compose more than 30 minutes with this high uh, uh, intensity, then, you know, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. And um, you're from Indonesia, right? I'm from Indonesia. Right. Uh, I'm just thinking, right, how how being in Indonesia shaped your music, right? Okay, this is a very good question. I first started my uh, formal music education abroad in 2009 at Institute of Sonology. Then it was totally chaos because of cartel shock. No one told me, like, if you go to Holland abroad, you should study like this, but <laughs> nobody told me. Uh, I even got dropped out before I eventually come back again. But one of the most problem that I face is when I try not to be Indonesian again. <laughs> I'm trying to be like the way they study, the way they compose music, you know, then it's, it's not working. And to answer your question, it's perhaps what I just explained to you. I mean, I'm, I'm a very, let's say for a nation, at least I'm very organized. Everything should be in time structure, everything should be planning. But when I compose my music, I'm using all this systematic thinking and algorithmic thinking because I read computer music from all education that I got from Europe, from, and, uh, from my uh, Indonesian perspective, which is Indonesia, everything is, like what Einstein said, relative. You know, if you say tomorrow, can be meaning tomorrow or can be meaning tomorrow. 
and this is actually the the let's say silver lining with my uh, I cannot say that I'm expert in gamelan, but this is something that I really like from gamelan. Yes, you know because you know the time is very. I will. I mean, from my my own opinion, my humble opinion, it's just, it's a relative. It's a relative there. If you see when people are about to to let's say close one fragment and waiting for the gong, you know, then the gong player will never hit at the right exact time. Okay, they always waiting, and it's really depend on he or uh, she uh, uh, interpretation of when to start on it. And this is something that I got from uh, Indonesian culture in my electronic music. So if you see indeed, my music is really chaos. It's really un, 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 unorganized in a way, you know. But if you really listen to my music, my music is just sort of a form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just A, B, A, B, A, B all the time. But inside that, I put a lot of chaos, which Good. I got like, the, which I got from the inspiration of a balungan uh, melody. In you yes. got you got the reference, then you can get all the information, improvisation inside. Yes. Mm, I have a question, right? I just um, this is very interesting what you're telling me about because um, about how actually being being and living in Indonesia, right, shaped your music, and your music is very very technological, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and even there, right? You you can see uh, how it shaped uh, your musical thinking. But um, I would be very interesting if you would be just just imagine if you would be a female, right? Would you your music would be the same or not? Yeah, of course. I'm totally agree. I am. Uh, let's let's do like this, yeah. If I listen music outside of my uh, listening time, like listening outside this contemporary music. I will listen to more melancholic music. Yes. Jazz. But my wife, she's listened to underground music. Yeah. <laughs> more right. heavy metal than me. So of course, when, when it's come to gender, everything will be reflected in the art itself. Yes. Yeah. So you your music would be different, right? If you would No, be... of course. I'm totally agree. S uh, so in what way, let's say your music more represents let's say male uh, perspective not really male I, I i wouldn't say that my music is really male perspective even though i need to admit i need, i need, really need to admit this i i i somehow have this let's say uh social communication problem with people in indonesia yes. because i'm just too direct yes but but my yeah my music is also too direct but there is a very certain melancholic, even female side of my music, you know. Because if you if you listen to my music, there is also like very sudden changes of mood there, you know. Yes. But people sometimes just get uh, blind from the material that I use, because most of the material that I use is a is, is a chaotic sound. It's a synthetic chaotic sound. Yeah. I mean, it's just a very simple. It's a very simple logic, yes, Andres. If someone create art, and then the art itself is literally the expression of that person, how melancholy is it? Yes. How romantic is it? Correct. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, I noticed, right, that in recent years, uh, uh, that you uh, uh, that you work uh, with multimedia compositions as well, right? Yes. So you are extending, right? What was the reason why you <laughs> sold only, right? To, to let's say, to multisensorial experiences. Oh my God, this is very interesting question. You know, I started doing this computer music stuff, electronic music stuff, 2006. It was first started with Max MSP, 2006, okay? Yes. Then when I went to Sonology, honestly, before also uh, Rotterdam Conservatory, IRCAM and others, you know, there they teach you like really technical. You know, they, they really want you to achieve certain level of technicality. Then all this te technicality becomes something normal to you, okay? Then you need to find other things to make yourself fun to keep sleeping in the front of computer. 
And Fisol actually gave me that sense. So it's like a new toy for me. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like a new toy. I mean, let, let's put like this, this, okay? With my with my with my technicality knowledge and also let's say uh, just a short artistic, artistic experience, I can create whatever sound I want. I mean, you know, I, I I spend I spend my parents' money because my parents actually doesn't want to keep money by the end of their life. No, they want to spend all the money for their children to study. That's actually my parents thought. Like, they never bought me video game. They never bought me all these stupid uh, 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 toys. No, no, no. They will always bought me computer, hard disk. They take me every Saturday night to bookstore. So my parents is really academic person, and. I spend a lot of money trying all different uh, type of equipments from the cheapest to the expensive one. And because of that experience, I can create any sound what I want at the moment, even with only one computer. Yes. Okay, but with visual, wait, it's different. Why it's different? Because if you see, if you if you if you see from historic perspective, computer music is start first phase. Computer music is started first, okay, mm -hmm. and then visual only after uh, the graphical technology over the past I think 10, 15 years become more accessible, cheaper to people, and then it's just keep going on gradually. We can get more visual easy, more in, in a more easy way. Yes. Particularly after particularly after touch designer, and there's always something new, okay. But with I mean I'm not saying there's no something new in sound, but if you see in sound, well they're coming back doing modular synthesizer. Yes, they coming back now doing tape. I mean when I was in sonology, we have uh, we have a subject called uh, music with sonder computer or music without computer. Yes. We've been doing that for one year, only listening to the tape, you know. So, so indeed, visual is just like something entertaining for me. Then, but in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in the in the same time, the visual is also extend my artistic perspective in understanding my music. Actually, yes, because because at the beginning, honestly, I was just thinking that visual as a element to visualize my music. But, but as I keep going on going and going and understand, then understand more about that. For example, yeah, uh, uh, before I was graduate, I started thinking about this Kasam Kunstwerk, okay? And then, you know, this art, you know, the, the, the what, what is Wagner, you know, this uh, Kasam Kunstwerk, okay? Then I start to reflect to myself in my own culture. Yes, we have Wayan. We have Shadow Puppet. And in Shadow Puppet, you have literally everything like music shadow lighting singing everything and did you call it music no we call it shadow puppet you know then it's just keep going on deeper deeper for me <clears throat> you know um, there is a the field which called multimedia art right and and, and there's and, and then if you go to uh, and see different multimedia exhibitions or and see multimedia arts there is sound as well and then of course i have usually asked myself what's different between multimedia art and multimedia music right yeah. well that's why i prefer people call me audio visual you know because multimedia can be if you consider this one media then it's become media if you consider this one media then it's become media yes so the reason why i call myself audiovisual because i'm working with these entities yes audio and visual that's all yes but see here is um yeah this audio and visual world there is a one word which let's say it's let me say audio visual art right mm. and then is audio uh, audio visual music right and what's mm. different between this uh, audio visual art and audio visual music where when it starts and okay this is this is actually very deep uh, uh, conversation but this is just my uh, 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 humble answer okay yes for me if you call something music okay like if you call something music for me meaning that 
you are working on particular timeline. Yes. No matter how long is it, even like Kate's, it's almost like 15 years or 16 years, but there is a timeline there. Yes. And the person that created this is the person who tried to always extend the depth of the piece. We always trying to extend instead of finishing in one minute, we try to create something not even one minute, just try to extend to five minutes, okay? Yes. And we always try to maximize all the progress, all the metamorphosis of sound yes. within this timeline. Yes. Okay? Then when you call art, then it can be whatever. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, within a timeline. And that's why I tell you, even though I display my, my art as installation, but it's actually not installation, it's composition. Mm -hmm. I, I have exactly mean it, this piece will start from this time and end it this time. Yes, it was good. people need to be there. Yes, got it. Yeah, but you know, then I have next question, right? Uh, I clearly understand your idea of um, how music different differentiates from art, how audiovisual music differentiates from audiovisual arts, because in audiovisual music or multi-music, you, you see this uh, time, right? Timeline, time okay. But the question is, you see theater timeline as well, right? All theater, in theater. Yeah, theater. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. And this is, this, is, this, is, this is actually, I have the answer to you. Because basically, if I would like to answer for myself as Indonesian, yeah. we even don't call it music at first. Like theater, we have shadow puppet. Shadow puppet is actually theater. It yeah. has everything there. And what do you call it? We call it wayang. Yes. Yes. You know, like we, we call it Wayan. The problem at the moment that I find is like, I'm not against any musicologists or people who are trying to determine based on terminology, but the problem at the moment is when we try to box us everything. I mean, indeed, you need to box us everything you want if you want to analyze further. Yes. Okay. But if we try to box us everything in the context of creativity, then we get lost. Yes. Do you remember Fluxus? You know, Kate students make the Fluxus yeah. that was influenced by Neo Dada. They don't care about whether they make music. They don't care whether they make a, a visual or whatever, they just create it. Yes, got it. And what is your process of composing, right? How you start and, uh, and, uh, and, and how you evolve and what kind of stages you go through as a composer? I always interested with particular concept. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't have much composition actually, because one composition actually takes me a lot of time to think first about what to do suddenly. Because with, with, with this technicality level, I can just create whatever sound people like. Yes. And then what? But I have a question so, 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 here. What do you mean by concept? It's, is it musical concept or is it abstract idea or is it concept to make, uh, I don't know, to, mess, to create some message to society or? Can we start from any concept, okay? For example, at the moment, I, I, I even return back to the 1880s or 70s concept of cybernetic. I'm developing again the concept of cybernetic with my, uh, with my uh, collabor collaborator partner, with my collaborator. You know, but the problem with this collaboration is my, my collaborator is Indonesian, like very good choreographer, but they never work like this. You know, because uh, choreographer mostly, I, I please correct me if someone know, in Indonesia, they were educated uh, 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 following, this following this traditional way of pedagogy, you know, like, okay, start, start, stop, 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 right, start, ah, yeah, do that, do that, do that, you know, it's, it's more, it's more a uh, traditional way, you know? They never really like a uh, choreographer from Europe when they start from the concept of, for example, uh, Zen, and then they keep exploring the concept of Zen until they able to start establish the imagination. Yes. You know, me, myself, however, I can do both. But when I start having the imagination first, uh, Sandris, okay, put like this, because as in Indonesian, intuitive is everything. You know, like we start intuitive, which is our intuitive. Well, 
yes, intuitive is also right. But because I'm also educated here, I would like to combine them together. So I will earn the consciousness when creating my art. Mm -hmm. So I will not only allow myself drown in the imagination intuitive, okay? But I will also have a logic, the conscious to incorporate together between my logic and my intuitive. Mm -hmm. This is very something important. Yes. Good. So you start with the concept and what next? It depends actually. For example, I even also can start with the sound. For example, I really very interesting with sound. For example, uh, my hero in uh, uh, electronic music is uh, Panayotis Kokoras, of course, and Natasha Ben. Okay, when I listen to Panayotis before I know his concept of holophony, his sound is just amazing. Like when people cry, listen to the Beatles music. I'm crying, listen to his acoustic music. Yes, and also with Natasha, especially his. Uh, research now with specialization so it's really depend but after that i somehow try to find you know the other you know because if i get myself first into the sound i follow my intuitive okay then because i also have learned from systematical uh, thinking then i try to find perhaps another concept where i can incorporate them together or perhaps i can enrich this intuitive concept or the other way around Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how your music changed in the last 10 years? <sighs> After I get married, of course. Come on, man. It's really changed everything. I don't know even why. People just keep asking me. If you listen to my music like uh, 10 years ago, it was really even more chaos than now. But I think not about getting married. It's because something that Natasha also saying Natasha Berop also saying in another podcast. Yes. She literally said like this, if I'm not mistaken. Now I know what I don't know. Yes. And because I because eventually I know what I don't know, I eventually know what I can do. Yes. And because of that, I know what to do. Yes. And that's actually something this actually the, the turning point in my life. Yes. You know, like like Honestly, I know what I'm not capable. Okay, then then I am dealing with it. It's okay. I mean, I'm not Iron Man. This is actually the problem. Most of people who study like me, they thought that they're Iron Man. You know, I'm not Iron Man. I know what I'm not capable with. Then I dealing with it. Then I eventually know what is the best part of me. Then I keep focus on it. Then honestly, the aesthetic is changed. And uh, you said, of course, the more multimedia, right? Yeah, you can use multimedia. It's it's so fine. And uh, how technological development uh, uh, impacted uh, your your work, right? Your pieces, uh, and, and because you are very technologically influenced artist, right? Uh, sorry, one more one more time. The first how question. technological development broken because in let's say in in last ten or twenty years there was a huge right, a huge uh, huge growth of technology, right? development and how this development impacted your work which i suppose uh, should be quite impactful because uh, you are a very technological keen uh, composer right that's why actually i'm doing this in vr because during that time i have two uh, option doing research in ai or doing this in vr VR meaning that computer game in, in any in any computer game technology, okay? Like even visual, computer graphic, anything related with the computer game technology. And then the reason why also also including Ambisonic, you know, because Ambisonic now heavily adopted in computer game technology. And the reason why I'm not going into uh, artificial intelligence, because it's just too technical at the moment. And I somehow feeling discomfort actually working too much on the coding side instead of thinking the music itself, you know. Uh, but maybe, but but anyhow, I'm still using a few machine learning uh, tools in my in my work, but only me as a user, not not as a you know developer. And 
I don't know. Maybe other friends can also correct me. I think we are somehow at the edge of technology. Like we need to wait until something really big happen and then change everything. Because if you see, what next, Sandris? Quantum, quantum music. Yeah, quantum, yeah. Uh, uh, no. Uh, what is this planet guy? Eduardo Miranda already have this quantum thought of music since years ago. He already developed, you know, like he already developed uh, uh, not even quantum, before quantum, uh, the bio biocomputing. Okay, the, uh, the, the, the bio computing, uh, uh, when the piano, he, he played piano and then uh, do it with the single send computer. <laughs> and what next? But this is actually my answer to people who ask me about, can we really go into this AI, you know, functionality in our life and uh, fear? My answer is always is the first step is having quantum computer in nano size. You know, like like if we have quantum computer in nano size, then then there will be something big. You do a lot of uh, not a lot of, but at least you have some pieces using VR, right? Virtual reality. I have I have one one already published the web VR and two others still on work. Yes, and VR is let's say emerging technologies, right? What triggers? Uh, what triggers you into that, right? Into you? Uh, you know, if I if I speak with my other friends, you know, ah, Patrick, come on, VR and all these things, seventies, uh, uh, Youngblood, Jean Jean Youngblood, who who sadly passed away a few months ago, already predicted this in his book. In his book, you know, uh, 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 I forget his book. He already predicted this in his book. He even literally predicted virtual production, like exactly in chapter four, or chapter something, like, like literally. Someday in the future, people would not go and then do, do shooting outside. They will just use screen with things like literally. So if you say emerging technology, well, NASA already have this system since 80s also, but it's emerging technology because it's accessible more because it's more accessible now to society, you know? But it's not something new. And this is, this is what I ask you, like, what next then? Yes, but, uh, but it's, uh, um, I have feelings, it's like that there is some kind of, uh, that you are really like saturated with technology, right? You are yeah. overeaten, right? But me, uh, you know, you one of the very heavily using all these uh, technologies, right? I got tired with it, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm being very honest here. Yeah? For example, it took me only not even two hours to calibrate the entire University of Melbourne uh, mocap, take all the data sent to my computer, mapping everything, and reset the shape of uh, object that I use on the tracker into another software. Then I got tired of it, you know, there's no something, another thing that excite me. Except if I go deeper as a developer, you know, like, and I, but I don't want to go into this level. I want to create art. Then, then it's actually some, then I think it's also my, then I think this is my, how do you call it? Uh, I think this is my uh, obstacle, let's say artistic obstacle at the moment. I need to even define myself again, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, I um, got it. And um, uh, but you got my point, right, Sandris? When you already have like the basic knowledge of technology, you know, it takes me only one hour to learn another programming language. It takes me only a few hours actually to change uh, to other software. Indeed, I still ask a few friends if I get lost with uh, some programming, but it's just very easy to switch to everything because we already learned the very basic. Yes. And then of course we're always trying to some find something interesting. Yes. Oh, uh, you 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 know uh, Rob Hamilton, right? Yes. Rob Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah, Rob Hamilton, the yes, person I... who created this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you you interviewed him, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so 
my other hero, actually, yeah, my other hero, the first person that show me in the front of my eye performing audiovisual with game was Ricardo Clement. Okay, the first guy. And then from, from there, I met, I met again Marco Ciciliani, my friend, who, who you know, worked together with yeah. the Rob in the recent, yeah? And this is actually something that I'm trying to develop further than what Rob already did it. So Rob created the virtual reality musical instrument. Yes. Okay, and then my question then, I believe that the existence of this technology is not to replace the acoustic instrument. There should be something more than that. Yes. And that's why in my research, what I'm doing, I'm not really actually creating virtual reality acoustic, virtual reality, virtual reality musical instrument, but what I created is a system that allow us to create audiovisual composition. Even though people may argue it's also instrument or apparatus, but I'm not literally trying to just, uh, you know, create a virtual version of something. Of course, Rob may argue about, about, about my opinion, but, but, but it's something that I learned from Rob. I mean, we do Zoom, I ask him, he shared me about his technology, his opinion, you know. And um, uh, what do you fear as composers the most? <laughs> Can I? Can I be really honest here? I'm really afraid if I return to Indonesia. I, I, I'm always very afraid. Like I'm at the moment in Indonesia, yeah. then, I'm, then I'm really afraid. Why? I don't have friends to talk. So, so you are afraid of being isolated, detached? I'm not afraid. No, 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 I'm not afraid of being isolated. I'm afraid because I tried to return to Indonesia, I still able actually to create one uh, award-winning composition during the depressing time, but I don't have friend that I can literally, that I can directly say that I'm doing uh, ambisonic experiment, fifth order using this one, Immediately like that, without need to telling them what is ambisonic, what is the difference between conventional multi channel, and you know, without explaining them everything back again. You know, we need friends, right? I mean, we need friends, right? And then also, I, I love my country, but it's just it's very hard for me. For example, like if I return, and also I think also as I told you, my problem perhaps in communicating. And also Asian culture. <laughs> if I speak honestly, they may somehow consider that I'm showing off or being egoist or something. It's totally different. Like if I if I if I'm in Australia and I say, oh, you, they understand. If I speak with German people, oh my God, I'm like a normal person. If I coming back to Holland, then I'm, you know, you no, know, this is actually this is why I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid if I cannot get a job after my PhD abroad. Because if I return Sandris, I'm, very be I'm, I'm being honest with you, okay? So if I return to Indonesia, I even don't know what should I do. Because the problem here, we adopted linearity in education. So our higher education uh, ministry believe that Perhaps they will change soon because our minister, our current minister is smart one. But at the moment they're still adopting that the uh, higher education should be linear. I am linear. My undergraduate is, uh, you know, electroacoustic. My master is a sonic art and my PhD is also linear. But it's linear, but it's also interdisciplinary. If my passport is European passport or Australian passport. I can teach in computer science. I can teach in the fine art. I can teach in music. I can teach in dance for the you know system. I can teach almost everywhere with the knowledge. But in Indonesia, no. You know, I was I'm only able. I, I remember if I'm not mistaken, I'm only able to teach at the university to have specific subject that related with my field. And something that even make making worse that even though I know is all this uh, let's say technological knowledge, 
I graduated from music department. <laughs> and then, then sexually become a pro, you know. Got it, got it. And um, uh, why do you still compose, right? Because that's the only thing that I know. I try to, you know, when I get dropped out from sonology, it was really crazy. I decided not, I sell my laptop, honestly, I sell my laptop, okay? Then I decided to take care of my family business, which is diving center. I'm also a, a diving instructor. I'm, 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 let's say, I will consider myself as a good underwater photographer. I worked professionally before. It's just not me. <laughs> I, I close the business. I tell my father, well, I'm not a good son, but you know, I just never give up. Let me let me return and finish what unfinished business. And 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 honestly, this this is the only thing that I know, Sandri. This is my life. I uh, you know, in in, in, Uni in Unimel, people know me that because I'm working from nine to ten almost every day. And they asked me, why don't you talk with my with your wife? And I say, my wife know me already. That's why I marry her. Because she knows that this is my life. Like, like this, is, this is my life. It's the only thing that I know, actually. And uh, this is the melancholic side, isn't it? It's a very romantic side, actually. Uh, just, <clears throat> right? Not maybe the, now just the, um, uh, how you um, how you see how music landscape right new music landscape change in Indonesia oh. in the last twenty years right how it changed good honestly good okay because uh, I, I cannot really say in this in this in this video like entirely but I can just start from my uh, era okay I started doing contemporary music electronic music two thousand and five. Okay, and during that time when you do this thing, I even not allowed to perform in my previous university because it's not considered as music. If you do coding and stuff, you're not considered as a musician. But it's changed over the last 10 years. Okay, we even have a lot of uh, contemporary experimental, which is good, but this is the problem, Sandris. Okay, let's say I started 2005. Now I'm here again, okay? They started now. There is a gap between me and them. And this gap is honestly huge. Then I don't know how to talk with them. And they even don't know how to understand my music. And this is actually the problem for me. I'm trying to explain with them. Also, also, also not talking about music, yeah? Also talking about uh, how youngsters here, let's say, have 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 done much, have have not much of uh, 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 general knowledge. I mean, like let's say in general knowledge, understanding general knowledge, understanding about other culture in different country, you know. And of course, I cannot like force them to understand, but because of this uh, 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 gap of information also become a, one of the struggle for me, actually. And Can you imagine, Sandris, you return to your home, you return to your own country, but I cannot just suddenly to just explaining what is the difference between two-dimensional and three-dimensional video mapping is just a chaos. I even even during the conversation with the person, I, I, my friend, okay, also lecturer, even during the conversation, I eventually just say, I'm sorry, I'm also not experienced with the video mapping, so I'm sorry, I should also learn from you. It's just because the level of, don't know how to talk with them, is just, I don't know how to describe it works. And can you imagine if I need to explain to them what if, you know, because now at the moment, all the studio, or commercial studio, they get really crazy with Dolby Atmos, okay? I am doing freaking web synthesis, 192 speakers in 2009. And they're just doing it now. So you see the, the gap 
the gap of information is just used, and I just don't know how to talk with you. Um, um, once we talk, and you said it's the first uh, new mu uh, new music festival, or contemporary new music festival yeah. in Southeast Asia, happened actually in Indonesia, right? Yeah. When it was, and uh... the first one, I mean, other guys, if you if you want to please correct me, yeah? but if I'm not mistaken, the in in Southeast Asia, the first was. Uh, Pakan Components Indonesia, so Indonesian Music uh, Week, let's say. Then it was started sometimes in 70s. And it was actually established by uh, a lot of great people, including Slamet Abdul Shukur. Slamet Abdul Shukur is the first Indonesian who studied abroad for composition, and he was actually the student of Mishan back in, in, in France. But Mishan is not his... Uh, Composition teacher, but rather uh, analysis teacher. Because I remember Misha only teach analysis yeah, in conservatory. And this person has student Otto Siddhartha, and Otto Siddhartha is the second person who studied abroad, but he uh, more interested in electronic music. And he teaches me. Then I eventually also uh, got to Holland. And then it was started around the 70s. But then there is a lot of chaos with the bureaucracy here, and it was stopped. And then in early 2000, when you know it was very quiet time for new music in Southeast Asia, Michael Asmara started Jakarta Contemporary Music Festival with the help of friends and also and and it was like booming. Friends from all over uh, region actually come, including Jake Body from New Zealand. That's why I know Jake Body uh, very well. He was, he was actually also the one that convinced me to go to Sonology. And after that, I'm still have a good connection with Francis New Zealand, you know. And unfortunately, uh, there is a bit organization problem there. And then eventually, uh, Yogyakarta Contemporary Music Festival Vacuum. And then it's just half of Kakum from a couple years. And then our friend uh, from Art Music Today uh, started October meeting. I think it's also a freer, then it's just keep on going. However, that if you would like to say more organized in terms of funding and everything, at the moment, uh, Thailand. And, yeah, uh, because it's, hmm? and, and what about new music education, right? Contemporary <sighs> music education, is it uh, already institutionalized? And when it was institutionalized? And Sandris, if I answer honestly here, people will hate me, but I need to answer this so people should know because this is something very important, okay? It's not about me saying something, but no, this is, this is something that we should learn together. You know, if you would like to be great, you should first admit our problem, then we work together from this problem, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> they would like to become Beethoven. <laughs> this answer everything. <laughs> uh, we would like to become Beethoven. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and, uh, and when this, like, because when I interviewed a lot of, let's say, from Southeast Asia, I saw from Vietnam, and I saw from uh, Bahrain, and from South America, I have a feeling, right, that there is. Different! Uh, different South America, South America, Vietnam. Oh my God, it's different. We have, I mean, one of the problem here also is post-colonial problem. We are really yes, fucked yes, up. Exactly, exactly. And here is like one feeling, like what's one going? I, at least I have a feeling that one way how new music, uh, let's say, emerge here or or develops uh, in those regions, right? Is it say somehow trying to to look on their kind of colonial past? Right and somehow find the roots and, and these roots somehow mix with uh, Western uh, contemporary new music. Is it the same thing going on in, Indone in Indonesia and the, the composers are mixing with uh, experimenting or merging uh, concepts of uh, Western new music into let's say sound systems or sounds or an instruments of Indonesian local traditional instruments? Okay, let me let me put like this. Okay, let me put like this. If you speak like this, you really elaborate everything in a proper way about 
go, you know, the interculturation, the interaction between Indonesian uh, concept of art with the technology from West and blah, 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 blah. But not, not all musicians from Indonesia actually can really think from this perspective of elaborating all the elements into their music, okay? And this is my, this is my experience, okay? Because I always telling them, them I always telling them that uh, I learn from school because that's the only thing that I know. Then the social problem emerges. Then I somehow feel that they are antipathetic with people from uh, academic background or even people that are able to really elaborate their 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 work in a more uh, not even systematic yeah, in a more organized way. Yes, Be because they believe this intuitive, intuitive, intuitive all the time. But this intuitive actually lead them to only exhibiting their work, for, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, only from exotism perspective. You know? Yes. You cannot, you cannot just, you cannot just represent Papua as a naked dancer on the stage. If you will present a dancer as a naked, as a Papua as a naked dancer in the stage, then you should represent from, in my, in my humble opinion, of course, in a more proper way with the more proper concept about why we should exhibit this body here. Then it should, then it will, of course, involve in many ways, of course, the music should also uh, support the performance and then everything then this is actually the problem that we face at the moment in, 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 in Indonesia. When, for example, yeah, we, have, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we have one of the biggest, I think, Indonesian uh, noise music community. Okay? And they do, they, they do harsh noise. Okay? Of course, by the end, because of the internet, they know what is electroacoustic. Perhaps they see my uh, uh, biography or whatever. That would be quite interesting, okay? And of course, when I need to explain about electroacoustic, then I need to explain about the concept of noise in terms of uh, aesthetic from musical uh, point of view and noise in a more general way. I need to explain, you know, like, like, like the way just explain, you know, in a more systematic way. And I mean, this is my humble opinion because I really experienced this, uh, uh, so this. Perhaps also the way I'm speaking wrong, I don't know. They, 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 they feel offended. Mm -hmm. But this is not my point, man. If you do electroacoustic music, you never become very famous like uh, Hollywood people, no? I just want to let you know that there is another thing beside what you're doing. And if you know this, you can even create even more with what you like at the moment. Mm -hmm. But you know, because of, I told you, because the gap is just huge. And also perhaps the way me explaining not in the proper way, I guess I don't know. But at university, I'm doing fine. Only, only outside, I don't know. There is a social problem there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, um, and what are the trends, right? What are the trends in in the new music landscape in Indonesia? Where it goes, right? Oh, now, now experimental, especially in Jogja. You know, like as long as you do noise, yes. Ah, oh, man, you're yes, experimental. As long as you can do, as long as you can do noise, good. But then what? That's actually the thing that I would like to tell them. I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to give free freaking education like to them. Then explain to you. I can explain to you like almost everything theoretically, historically, from Edgar Fares concept, Philip Fafilion, metastasis with everything until spectrum morphology. They don't, they, 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 they shouldn't, they should. They don't have to know all these things, but yes. if they know, I believe they can do more. Yes, got it. And uh, how how new music uh, audience change? Depend. 
depend the place, depend the community. In Jakarta here, we have, uh, thank you very much to uh, Gunawan Muhammad, Gunawan Muhammad, uh, uh, Mas uh, Tony Prabowo. So in Indonesia, unfortunately, the, we, we only have three eldest composer. Yes. New music. My teacher, Otto Siddhartha, Michael Asmoro, the one that I told you, uh, 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 the founder of Yogyakarta Contemporary Music Festival, and then uh, Tony Prabowo, also a uh, composer who's, uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure whether he's director or only curator at Salihara Community. Salihara Community, luckily, we have this uh, very good community that always support uh, contemporary art. Okay, They have already their own uh, audience. But of course, it's audience, you know, audience, new music audience. It's not like if you if you go to Berlin, you know, if you go to uh, uh, Paris, let's say, or other uh, city in Europe. And in Yogyakarta, yes, there is also audience, but it's just like your friend, your friend to no friend, you know, friend, friend, friend to no friend. So if you if you accept accept perhaps Senyawa, Senyawa of course is booming. You know, you know like Senyawa, Senyawa, Senyawa is. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I know them, we, we talk, we're close. I was even helping uh, work together. We, we did residency back in Frankfurt. Yes. Uh, but of course, he's totally from different, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, background as me, you know? Yeah. Yes, got it. And... Um... And what is uh, the role of new music or experimental music? Uh, the what? Society? The role? Yes, role in society. Yes. You mean the person that become our role in society? Uh, music, right? What is music role? Why? Uh, why we? Why? Oh, the, the the music role in our society. Yes. Oh, Sandris, I cannot answer it actually because it's really personal. It's similar like when you ask someone what is music, and everyone may have their own uh, their own answer, right? So I think to answer you, I should answer from my own perspective. What yes. is the role of music in a society? You know, music is one of the most powerful thing in the world, right? It can you know, break down the regime. It can, you know, like it's just very powerful. And I understand music not only as something to entertain. I, I conceive music as equal as science, but it's not science. Music is not science, music is art. You can see music from science perspective, but music is not science. You know, music is like love. If you love someone, you just love it. The same like music. If you like it, you just like it. You know, it's not science, but you can see music from science perspective. Yes. Yeah. And then music can also be, how do you say it? Like music can also be as indication to see how advanced certain community uh, intellectuality, you know, like, yeah. Do you, comp uh, do you consider yourself a successful composer? No, of course no, I'm really fucked up. Oh my God. I even don't know what to do after my PhD. And then I'm not trying to complain, but if, I mean, I, I believe everything happened for a reason, okay? Yes. Everything has happened for a reason, okay? I know I'm struggle at the moment thinking that, because I know exactly how to finish my PhD. Like 100% I know how to finish this PhD, how to create the piece, how to write the dissertation. Then I become afraid actually. Yes. Because uh, actually it will lead me to joblessness, which is also fine, right? But You see Rob, Rob, right? Yes. He is associate professor. Yes. Uh, Marco, a uh, full professor. Yes. Stefan, full professor. Uh, Stefan, full professor. Full Sly, professor. Uh, uh, teaches two universities, at least. I don't yeah. know whether he, he has or he, he has. Now, can you now understand why I would Either, like to... Uh, he's professor, most probably, right? Okay, so now you understand why I'm doing PhD, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I know that, for example, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, 
I'm not really invited, but Marco decided to do lecture and performance in Yogyakarta. Can you imagine? So we finished, we did presentation in a conference in Singapore. So I present my work, he present his work, we finish the conference and we go to Yogyakarta. When we have really fun and he, and you know, he's a very nice person. Marco explained to me about things about what is PhD. Then I'm, then I'm really grateful knowing all these people, yeah? And also Per Magnus, uh, 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 he's now teaching in uh, City University, Hong Kong. I'm really grateful surrounded by the, all these great people, okay? Yes. Then of course, I'm trying to analyze their, 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 their career, you know, like, like their career, okay? Ricardo Clement, when he eventually get a full-time position in Manchester, he, I don't know for sure, but he he, he established the research in, you know, uh, he call it a interactive game audio composition. Yes. You know, get the funding, get stable financial, and start making crazy things. Marco eventually, he was the lucky bastard, okay? He got this funding from Austria, Austrian government conduct this uh, gamified audiovisual composition and performer for years, you know, like, and he's hit it. And then, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you one thing. And I know this thing because when I was get dropped out second time from Sonology, uh, not second time, for the first time in Sonology, it was the drop, it, it, was, it was the third drop out in my life actually. <laughs> The turning point was my music was get accepted at the conference in Taiwan. And this actually the first time in my life I understand that if you want to survive in this field, I should get a PhD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because with the PhD, I can get more knowledge, I can get more skill, you know, I learned a lot of things networking in order to keep my 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 uh, artistic practice ongoing, and that's actually the reason why I'm doing PhD. So hopefully, eventually, I will get a, a, a position somewhere. Good, good. And uh, the last question, right? Yeah, what, of course, please. What would be your three suggestions to younger composers, right? <sighs> good one. Guys, listen to me. Fifteen years ago, actually, I just text a person about this. Uh, 15 years ago, everyone told me that I was freaking crazy doing this thing. Uh, you don't know what to do and blah, 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 blah. When I returned to Indonesia uh, for vacation in 2015, when Marco also here, I told them that, well, you cannot just now creating visual using this uh, rendered uh, software like Blender, blah, blah, blah. You should start doing real-time rendering. They say that you are rather than you are crazy, blah, blah, blah. And it turned now all the software adopting that procedural method. So if you believe in something, just do it. Mm -hmm. Don't think about others, just keep on going. The problem with art guys, we never know what is in the future, but we will know that the winner is the one who just keep doing their shit. It's been proof, you know, like just the person who just keep doing it, keep doing it because they believe. And the reason why I keep doing it because I, I told you I, I have no other things. I, I just I don't know. I, this is my love. This is my life. It's the only thing that I know. Sunrise. I have. I already built a system, and with the system, I only need to put my finger in the controller. Then I can do any sound I wanted. You know. So it's the only thing that I know. And the second thing, the mistake, especially for my friend from Southeast Asia. You should start planning your career. You should start planning your career. If you want to do this for the rest of your life, first of all, you should know that you will not get rich. And therefore, you should plan your career. Mm -hmm. Plan your career meaning you should know who to talk, who start making networking. You know, it's very important, you know? Otherwise, people don't know you and you don't know also to develop yourself. You're, that end, you know, like like that end. One of the turning point also for me that when I was in IRCAM, you know, I don't know who's Robert Henke at the beginning. Like literally, I don't know who the hell is this guy. Okay. And then when I when they when they accept me in IRCAM, it turned out he's actually the guy behind the Ableton. 
you know, and from there we, we keep in touch and he taught me a lot of things and I know how to do networking, you know, it's very important, okay? And the last thing, the last thing, especially for people uh, in Indonesia, I know it's very hard, you know, like it's just very hard. And it's also relevant with the post-colonial, if I may speak, okay? At the moment, we cannot resist any international collaboration. And its international collaboration come, the money come from certain institution, NGO or whatever. Okay, Sandris, I'm, I apologize, I need to tell this, okay? But you should guys understand your position in that project. Mm -hmm. Okay, because all my friends who start doing international collaboration with other artists from abroad, they don't understand their position. They might just become an object for them. Okay, mm -hmm. this is very important. If during that project you just become an object for them, then you should consciously understand that. So if you have another project with others, then you know how to position and negotiate your position there to start establish your own thought also. You know, perhaps perhaps the person not intentionally meaning that only collaborate you as, a, as, as, as an object, okay? Yes. But we should be having conscious about this, understanding our position. This is very important. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with this, for example, Sorry, but I need to tell this and this because I will not have any platform. There is a project about tuning system or tonality in Indonesia at the moment. Okay, all the people just keep on going there and then, you know, participate. For me, good. Thank you very much for creating this project in, 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 in the region even. But there is no, they, 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 they make a discussion, talk about this, inviting all the academic, but they don't invite any electroacoustic composer or even contemporary composer to discuss about this from the region. And therefore, there is no other person in that project, okay, funded by this German institution, to, that able giving a counter thought or understanding about why you should use the term of tuning system, okay, you know, like to find uh, Southeast Asian, I don't know exactly, the, I forget the name. Southeast Asian tuning system is Southeast Asian. We don't have tuning system, like the way you see tuning system there. You can, you know, like, why, 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 why not sound, why not tuning system? Even though by the end you said it, uh, we are not talking tuning system like the way we see uh, uh, a tempered system, but indeed with the tuning system, there is a concept of generalization there. Mm -hmm. And Asian is not there. And Asian is not like that. You know, so it's very important. Understand your position in international collaboration. And therefore you can define yourself. This is the most important one. Thank you very much uh, for our interview. Thank you very much, Andres. I deeply appreciate it.